Hello my fellow wrestling fans, this is my state of wrestling address. And of course it is all part of my one, two, three cents. And I'm going to talk to you about how things are going in the world of professional wrestling, but I want to start off with the world of independent wrestling. And I'll be honest here, about a year ago if you would have asked me about independent wrestling, I wouldn't have really had a whole lot to say because quite honestly, I didn't know a whole lot about independent wrestling. I knew some of the names um, and saw them as they were coming up, uh, but I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it, especially on the local level, which is really important, I think, for wrestling fans to get behind their local independent groups. So if you live in an area where there is independent wrestling, I would strongly encourage you to check out a show. A lot of times it's between $10 and $15, sometimes even cheaper than that. It's a great night of family entertainment, or a great afternoon of family entertainment. There's Typically on these shows, you don't see a lot of uh, uh, excessive violence. There's not a lot of cussing or adult themes, so you can take the kids out and enjoy a day of wrestling. And it's a lot cheaper than going to a major league ballpark or a football game or an NBA game. And uh, in southern Illinois, which is where my one, two, three cents was founded and is based, uh, there are several professional wrestling groups, independent groups, most notably, and I am biased here because I am a part of this show, is AAPW, All-American Pro Wrestling, uh, has been around for about six years now, and in the last, uh, I would say since April of last year, of 2011, uh, the company recorded its first television show. It was a pilot called Collision, and it has taken off, and it is airing right now on TV, and it's online on uh, Vimeo, uh, but the company uh, has been very successful. In fact, earlier this month in January, the biggest crowd ever um, at our arena, if you will, Black Diamond Harley Davidson, they came out for AAPW main event, and there were a lot of great matches on that card from the local talent perspective, uh, including guys like Poker Face, Heath Hatton, uh, Edmund Livewire McGuire, the champion, Axe Albert was his challenger, Jay Spade, Bull Bronson, the Golden Boy, Greg Anthony, uh, Mike Masters, who I actually wrestled and won, but that's uh, a whole nother post. You guys have probably seen that video already as well. So a lot of local talent and a lot of local folks working hard behind the scenes. Chris Hagstrom, Adam Testa, to name a few, that uh, really put their uh, heart and soul into this. And that's the whole basis of uh, independent wrestling. Uh, and it's not just AAPW that has these hardworking, dedicated people. Uh, there is also ICAW, which is located in Anna, Illinois, and uh, IWA Unlimited, which runs shows in Olney and Mount Vernon, Illinois. You know, these guys and gals work very hard to one day maybe make it to the big leagues, but, you know, they may not. And they don't care if there's a crowd of 15 or if there's a crowd of four or 500. They're out there giving it their all. And as fans, I think we owe it to them to give them a shot, give them a chance. You know, they may not have the uh, John Cena-like physiques, and they may not have the uh, cat-like abilities like The Undertaker or uh, a CM Punk promo skills. But you know what? These guys really do work hard. And, you know, I'll give you another example um, of independent wrestling and, and how it's kind of grown. Uh, you know, I look at guys like Colt Cabana, uh, Pac, El Generico, Matt Cross. All four of those guys drove uh, from the Chicagoland area, to, came down and, and did a show. And, you know, it changed my perspective once again on independent wrestling because it's not just a bunch of wannabe wrestlers, or it's not just a bunch of backyard guys. Uh, I know that independent wrestling has gained that reputation from some casual fans. I you certainly will admit that at one time I uh, had that perspective. But uh, these guys, and like I mentioned, the names that I mentioned a few minutes ago, they are the real deal. They work hard. Um, you know, Pac and El Generico, I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand why a lot of these guys aren't in the quote-unquote big leagues, but Pac and El Generico, quite honestly, uh, put on a great, amazing show. And, you know, one thing I would like to see happen in 2012 is companies like TNA and WWE and even Ring of Honor bring up some of these younger talents, promote these guys, push these guys, give these guys a shot. And that's going to segue into my next uh, uh, observation. You know, the WWE is, is somewhat coming around in its stance 
Um, I'm glad to see that Daniel Bryan is the World Heavyweight Champion. I don't know how long he's going to hold the belt, obviously, and none of us do. I like the where they're going with his character, the development and turning him kind of into a heel here. I like how they're using him. CM Punk is another example uh, of somebody who came from the independents and is now having success in the major leagues, or, or the big leagues, if you will. Um, it's good to see these guys who aren't necessarily born with a last name uh, or born into the business that are kind of working their way up, working their way up the food chain, climbing the ladder. Uh, Karma is another example that I hope to see her back uh, wrestling once again for WWE. Beth Phoenix. Uh, Natalia Neidhart, you know, and I mentioned the name recognition. Of, obviously, she is a uh, second or third generation superstar, but definitely has the talent and the skills and has proven that. And uh, I hope that WWE also works on its Divas division and grooms that talent and, and brings in more women like Natalia and Beth and Karma. And speaking of WWE, I really hope that there is some reconstruction done with the tag team division. I thought that with Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne forming Air Boom, we were going to see uh, a resurgence in the tag team ranks. And there was a little bit of buzz, a little bit of excitement there. But Evan Bourne, has, it's been documented, he has uh, some demons, some issues, if you will. Uh, he needs to sort that stuff out before he proceeds forward. And the WWE has suspended him once again. And there's even speculation that he will not be coming back, which is unfortunate. Not just for him, but for the fans of professional wrestling. But honestly, he needs to get himself squared away first before he can focus on being a sports entertainer. Epico and Primo, I like this tag team duo. I like what they uh, have done so far in the ring. Let's see where the WWE goes from here in terms of developing new tag teams. I think uh, really the Uso brothers is about it. I like Jack Swagger and uh, Dolph Ziggler pairing up too uh, in recent months, but you know they both are kind of pursuing that singles career too, so uh, time will tell with them. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about TNA. I do like the fact that Bobby Roode is the champion, and they're kind of focusing, again, on young talent. Uh, James Storm, uh, AJ Styles, and I know some of these guys have been around for a while, but they haven't really necessarily been in the spotlight. So it's time for the likes of Hulk Hogan, Sting, Kurt Angle, to start kind of passing the torch, grooming the next generation. And I think uh, for a while there, both companies had kind of dropped the ball on that, and were not doing that. Uh, the Undertaker... Uh, you know, will he retire after WrestleMania 28? You know, will he go 20-0 and 0 and uh, pass the torch, if you will? And he hasn't been very active in the last couple of years anyway, but uh, for his health's sake, I hope that uh, when he feels and when uh, doctors feel the time is right, that uh, he does hang it up. And I'm not going to speculate and, and, and make up news here, but I would think that if anybody were to retire in 2012, the Undertaker would certainly be at the top of those list of contenders. Triple H, I would also look for maybe to be even less active in the ring than he was in 2011 and didn't do a whole lot in 2011. Uh, I think he'll focus on that uh, COO position. Uh, Zack Ryder, the gnome here, says it all. He's been injured, broken back, allegedly, uh, by Kane. Uh, I think we all know that this is a storyline, but obviously he's going to be taking some time off, and I hope they bring him back. Um, and kind of tweak that character and let him mature a little bit more. I do think that Zack Ryder has a lot of potential. Um, would, would like to see that character kind of go from that uh, Jersey Shore fist-pumping wannabe uh, and make him into to somebody a little bit more legit. Cody Rhodes, Dolph Ziggler, um, guys I'm keeping an eye on for 2012. Uh, a lot of potential, a lot of potential. I, I, I hope that these guys get some pushes and world title runs, um, and I, I'd like to see guys like uh, Randy Orton and John Cena kind of helping build some of these guys up. I think John Cena has done a pretty good job of that with, uh, with Zack Ryder as far as helping him uh, get over even more so with the fans. I think he's kind of using some of his star power to accomplish that. Um, again, independent wrestling. Please pay attention to it. If you live in an area that has it, go out and check it out. Just one time. Uh, if you don't, Know if you have it, uh, Google search. Uh, do, uh, do a search on YouTube. You, be, you may be surprised at what you find. And I encourage you to subscribe to my 123 Cents and let me know what you think. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter as well. That is 
the state of wrestling. Thanks for watching.